Morning Ian Hughes, yes, how are you doing? Welcome back, I hope you're all well and I hope you're having a great day. It must be nearly Christmas, so I'm not sure when this video will go out, probably the Sunday, Christmas Eve. So I really do hope you all have a fantastic day tomorrow and uh, hopefully I will get some more videos done. I've actually got some time off so it's a week before Christmas, I've got a few days off, so hopefully I can get some more done on the Mini um, and get some more footage out over the Christmas period to keep you all busy. Um, so, uh, back once again, we are going to be, this will probably be part one of maybe two or three episodes where we're going to be building up the subframe uh, and getting it back in the car. It will then be on all four wheels and rolling again. We are really, really getting close to the end now, actually. It's, it's starting to put things back together again. Really gives sort of a positive vibe. So we'll get the subframe done, and then I need to paint the inside of the car. So without further ado, let's get into this week's video, and uh, I hope you have a fantastic day or a fantastic Christmas break. Catch you again in a moment. Right, that's everything organised. I think I've got everything I need to build up the rear subframe, but I'm bound to have forgot something. A lot of stuff has been refurbished. You know, this sort of hardware has been cleaned up, refurbished. I've done new cylinders and new shoes, and we've got new dampers as well. They're, um, they're pretty good value. They're better than the original equipment. They're gas dampers, Bill Stein, good quality. Um, we're gonna fit high lows. We've got high lows on the front and rear. Obviously the radius arm's all been overhauled. Wheel bearings, they're non-Timkin ones because you cannot get Timkin ones at the moment. I think there's a problem with Timkin bearings. I think they've been recalled, um, but don't quote me on that. So yeah, I couldn't get genuine Timkin ones, so we've had to go with aftermarket ones. Um, and yeah, I just need to get it all built back up. We're obviously gonna put it in the subframe. Um, now this subframe, I'm not gonna send it off to be powder coated or anything like that. The finish on it is already quite good. It's a non-genuine one. It's a mini spares one. I have fitted one before and I did have problems with it. Hopefully this one is okay. Uh, and when I say I have problems, last time, one of the captive nuts spun inside and it was missing the bracket for the brake pipe a bit random um but this one seems to be okay i will probably get some hammer right um smooth right and i'll give it uh an extra lick of paint in in like the areas that matter in the corners of places where it corrodes and that sort of thing and i will cavity wax um certain parts of it like inside here i've already done inside the where the uh, donut mounts go um i get asked this a lot so on the underside where it goes up against the floor uh, so actually it's this side there's some insulation blocks that go on there and it's basically just to stop the boot floor uh the subframe banging against the boot floor when you go over a big bump because obviously it's all on rubbers so it does move around a little bit um the stuff that's on there is like i don't know what it is it's like horse hair um the stuff that I've put back on in the past is just this. It's a bit of sound deadening, uh, sticky backed. It's just like closed cell, like neoprene. Um, so yeah, I'll just cut some blocks out and put them on the areas where it's likely to catch. So um, yeah, I think we've got everything ready. Just need to start getting assembling now, and then we can get it put back in the car, and it'll be on. It'll be on all its own four wheels. Ooh, and then what next? Who knows? Anyway, for now, let's get into this. Right, so before the subframe goes back together, it does come in paint. However, I might have said on a previous video, 
I've just, I'm gonna give it, I say I'm gonna give it, I have given it a coat of this Nitromores anti-rust metal paint. This is, I'm sure, just hammer right in the can. It looks the same, it smells the same, it goes on the same. Um, I'm sure it's the same stuff. Um, so I did start out by just doing my recommendation. If you if you want to skimp on paint, I would definitely do anywhere where there's welds, all the corners, everything like that. Because what you find, or I found, is where where the welds are, the paint has come off. They probably didn't clean up or prep before painting that much. It probably just gets dipped, to be honest, or something like that. Um, but I've done the whole lot, and to be honest, that I've used most of that can. 500 mil, um, I've got into all the nooks and crannies, not a really, really thick coat to be honest, just, just enough to get it covered. But like I say, definitely focusing on anywhere where there's welds. Um, but it goes on quite nicely. It is very cold today actually, so I don't know how that's gonna dry. Um, so that will just give it a bit of extra protection. I'm not going mad, I'm not gonna powder coat it or anything like that. Um, this car will stay in the dry anyway. So I need to give that probably 24 hours now and then we can start assembling it. Right then, I've been busy. So I've assembled up the rear arms. I wouldn't normally do this. When I've done Project Bruce, I just put the arms in the subframe with nothing else on them because the problem is once you fit the brakes and the drums and everything like that, it just adds weight, makes it harder to get in. Um, however, I can't progress anymore. Uh, I've just realized that's pretty much all the brake pipe I've got left and I need to replace the front to rear. So I can't really put the subframe in until I've got that front to rear brake pipe in because obviously it goes over the top of the subframe. So that's a bit of a pain. It's a weekend and uh, it means I probably can't make that much more progress. I can obviously get the arms and that fitted in the subframe and I can get it ready to go. Obviously, like I mentioned, that's had a coat of um, that Nitromores paint, like the hammer right smooth, right? Um, <clears throat> yeah, and everything's been fitted on here. Bearings are fitted, brakes are fitted. A couple of bits to point out to be mindful of when you're putting them back together. One is the brake shoes, they have a leading ed and edge and a trailing edge. So by trailing edge, it means there's a gap at the top. Leading edge means no gap in the shoe. Rule of thumb is whatever the direction of rotation is. So for this radius arm, that's forward. So the wheel will be turning like that. Um, the leading edge shoe should be the one with a gap and the trailing edge without a gap. It is easy to get them the wrong way round. <clears throat> doesn't really make much difference. I can't say I've ever noticed. I fitted them the wrong way around myself and I never even knew about it. Um, another thing to look out for, well, you can't really see it on here, um, but this spring down the bottom here, it can go uh, both ways round. If you put it the wrong way round, the top part of the spring rubs the hub. So you have to make sure that spring is the right way round. And then finally the handbrake quadrant I always have to look when I do these, so I, luckily for me, I do have another mini to go and reference. Um, so it's like the shorter end of the quadrant goes in towards the middle of the subframe. But um, yeah, I always, always get caught out by that. <clears throat> and the other thing as well, I've, I've looked at this before. So I, I put the pin down from the top down with a split pin at the bottom. Um, this one I've made the hole a bit bigger so I can fit a bigger split pin. The reason I've done it like that is because if you ever need to change the handbrake cable in the future, I think if you've got the pin up the other way, it's very, very difficult to get it out in the subframe. So if you've got it that way round, you can just knock the split pin out and get it out. Um, aside from that, it's pretty much all ready to go back in. I've fitted the bushes. Um, the bushes and most of the rubber components on when I build them now, I always give them a light smothering in rubber grease just to try and stop them perishing, especially things like the radius arm rubbers because 
they are they're a, a pain to fit and they do split same as like the knuckle joint rubbers um yeah new rubber nowadays is not as good as old rubber so um that will just uh protect it and uh it's oxidization of the rubber i did make a mistake i'd thrown away all the rubbers but luckily i had a hunt around and i had spares so that's good so that's all pretty much ready to go handbrake cable on i've lost one of the handbrake uh clevis pins I don't know where that could be. I need to have a bit of a hunt around. I suspect I've probably accidentally thrown it away. Um, but yeah, I need to get on to eBay. Or maybe they do it at Halfords actually. I might be able to get it tomorrow. I need to see if I can get some brake pipe to do the front to rear. Okay, there we go. So Halfords came up trumps. So we've got some brake pipe for the front to rear. Um, it's usually, it doesn't actually say on here, um, although everyone refers to it as copper brake pipe, it's usually a bit of a mix. It's copper and nickel, I think, Cunifer, um, Cupro nickel, whatever they call it, because copper on itself, work hardens, um, probably okay on front to rears and things like that. But if it's in an environment where it's likely to vibrate, uh, then the copper can work harden and it, and it can crack. Although saying that, I've never, ever had that happen on brake pipes but when i did use i used pure copper pipe on clutch slave cylinder that i'd done on vinnie my voxel engine mini that went inside the bell housing into the gearbox and that did crack and i guess because it's in a high vibration environment so anyway we've got a copper brake pipe we now need to lift that up it's sitting on a like a pallet um with dolly wheels on it. So I need to somehow get it lifted up so I can crawl underneath and get the front to rear brake pipe fitted in, fit up the subframe and then get it lifted into the car. So back in a moment, let's get this front to rear brake pipe fitted. Right, so that's the front to rear pipe run now. I have left lots here, um, cause obviously I'll get the subframe back in. Then I need, you need to bend it around the subframe and go into the union. So I've got lots and lots of spare. Um, so no worries there um, It is a bit of a pig to do laying on the floor the front to rear um, but we're there uh, It's all clipped in and where it's clipped in actually there's Little rubbers which go over the pipe. Obviously if you get vibration you can just see a bit of rubber there now I Have probably lost some of them or they've been lost over the years. So what I do is just get a bit of washer tubing as you can probably see towards the front there and then just cut a slip down the middle of the washer tubing to get it in so that's the brake pipe i'm pretty sure that's correctly placed around the front front floor pan now um before before it all goes back together underneath i'll probably just where those clips are i'll make sure they're waxed and then up the front here um, obviously again I've made sure I've got loads and loads spare for when it comes to plumbing it in so now we just got to get the subframe built up get everything assembled and it'll be ready to go back in you have tried to bring me down one time two times so many I've been lost but now I'm found and I'm not taking it again so I
One time, two times, too many I've been lost but now I'm found And I'm not taking it again So I won't go let you say I hate, say I hate I'm leading, I'm gonna play the phone I won't run from nothing, it's on my own No, I won't, I will fight back and back home probably it for this one so all assembled back up together now um, you'd have seen me with some red cable ties I need to put some more cable ties around here around the top just hold this in place while you fit it because it makes it a lot easier obviously all new brake pipes uh, we've got the pads on the top there it just stops it crashing against the boot floor when you go big bumps like I say I've put denitrile in all the corners and places that are subject to corrosion um, but yeah it's all ready to go back in the car now hopefully I can get it in without scratching up the paint on the boot floor because it's all very nice and tidy under there and um, yeah and then there's a the boot again I'm really pleased with how that come out it, um, it looks better than it would have done new but uh, yeah pretty pretty pleased so uh, there we go. So I hope you enjoyed this week's episode on the Racing Green. Once again, thanks to everyone that comes back and views the videos week in, week out. I really do appreciate your support. Uh, thank you for everyone that's gone out their way and bought me a beer. I really appreciate that as well. And um, yeah, remember to give it a thumbs up. If you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. I've got 500 plus videos on minis now uh, and I put out at least a video every week so it's worth getting yourself subscribed uh, I hope you all have or having a great Christmas and uh, I'll catch you again soon on the next one
Cheers.